Aloha and thanks for tuning in. So this is going to be a short video. Uh, I'm going to be talking about this little box right here. Now this is a multi-panel that I built going back to January time frame roughly. And I can't take a lot of credit for it. I followed someone else's instructions. Um, if you've ever seen Captain Bob's YouTube channel, he goes through step by step how to build this exact box. Uh, he's he's really good at it. I mean, as far as explaining things as he goes, so much so that I was able to not only build the, the box itself, well, the electronics behind it, but when I was putting the software in, when I was actually following his instructions on, you know, how to how to write the Moby Flight file, I was able to add to it. And what I added in was the autopilot functionality. Originally, this was just transponder and all your radios. Mine has autopilot. Uh, now, I kind of want to touch on this for a setup like mine, because what it does for you is it it gives you an external means to control. Now, don't get me wrong, Knobster is great. Knobster allows you to touch the screen and go, but it's also nice to have the buttons and knobs outside of the sim a little bit. And that's kind of the intention here is just button and, buttons and knobs outside the sim. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, this was in the old um, cockpit downstairs and I just took the components I built and put them in here. But I will touch on it. I'll actually get the camera, look straight at it and we'll walk through it. And I'll also have the cockpit and this screen visible as well. Um, so hopefully this helps somebody. Maybe you want to go build one of these yourself. And uh, I will tell you that Captain Bob's channel is phenomenal for that. So I'm going to stop here and jump into the close-up. So here we are zoomed in to the multifunction box here. Again, just a 3D um, printed enclosure. And you can see, well, it's hard to make out, but there's COM1, COM2, NAV1, NAV2. So I use this encoder here to control where I'm going and it's hard to see but this is one two four decimal eight five on both and up here in the cockpit as well it's one two four decimal eight five zero so let's say I want to change that to I don't know we'll do something one two six call it nine so I've dialed over to 1269. And if I look over here, if you look here, you'll see 126.9. If you look up here, you see 126.9 up here. And then let's. And by pushing it, I just switched my active. So I can control all my radios directly from here. But let's say I want to do something a little different. Autopilot. I can um, set an altitude, um, vertical speed, and heading all from in here. The autopilot is a zero or a one on or off. and my transponder. So let's change it to, I don't know, 6210. That seems fairly random. So let's So let's go to 6210. So we're on 6210. Now, mode three, uh, transponder mode, is the third position, which is on. Now, if I come down to here, let me go back up. I can change that to mode one, which is standby, and mode three, which is on. Um, that's one I still haven't uh, figured out more on how to shift the modes on. But I can do it from here. So you, you have a little bit more control over the uh, over the aircraft from an external means, and this is just done in Moby Flight. Um, I'm using an Arduino Mega, 
the 2560. And as you can see, that 6210 is showing up right there in my cockpit. And it, uh, it didn't, you know, break the bank per se. I mean, and I'll talk about why this is a good budget um, addition to any setup. The, uh, the, the LCD display, um, I, like eight or nine dollars. The Arduino Mega that's running it, roughly 20 bucks, so we're at 28 dollars. Um, this is a simple rotary encoder, it's only a couple bucks, so you know, we're not even at 30 dollars yet. And depending on which, um, now only this one is needed, obviously, because this one down here is. Is my uh, my knobster so this guy up here if you use a pre-built one like I did it's gonna run you roughly um, $20 or so if you build your own and you can build these uh, the rotary encoders that you build uh, you can just use or the dual rotary encoders you build you can 3d print a housing use two um, lower cost rotary encoders and build your own dual so you could build this a little bit cheaper than i did but uh super inexpensive uh twelve dollars call it two bucks so we're at fourteen dollars i'm gonna go with roughly thirty four dollars forty four dollars yeah, about thirty four to forty to to build the whole box not counting the uh 3d pr uh, printed enclosure and again, I just threw my knobs are down here to give it a more permanent home. And my next step is going to be to come up with a secure way to put it on the desk. And I may also come up with a way to angle it to make it um, a little uh, a little more usable, i.e. angled at the, uh, the pilot. But for the most part, I really do like the setup. And it, it cost me nothing. I had all the pieces parts and I just had to 3D print. So just wanted to show that off a little bit. Uh, it's another little add on here and I'll definitely do a flight with it and talk about it as I'm flying. But this is just the precursor to that. So if you're interested, concerned, uh, want to know more, Captain Bob's website, he's got the, a whole, he's got two videos on one on the hardware, on like how to actually build it. And the second one is all the software, everything you need, you know, software wise to go in and type in and, and get this thing up and running. And he even has, uh, resources or things you can buy. So if you're somebody who doesn't have the ability to 3d print, you can actually buy a kit for this from him. Uh, not that I'm trying to sell anything that, you know, or be an advocate for it, but his, his website's awesome. His videos are awesome. And he just offers some great resources for people. I know I've learned a lot by watching his channel. So I just want to point that out. But thanks for watching. And uh, just wanted to show you what's going on with the budget setup so far. So stay safe out there. Happy flying and uh, happy Sunday.